Hello, hello. Let's see if we get folks on here. I think we've got about 11 or so folks joining. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Source Snack Break with Kara Green today. Um, we have Jessica McNaughton joining us from North Carolina representing Kara Green. Um, and we'll just give a few minutes here to kind of let everybody log in. Um, if you want to notice on the right, there's a chat area where you can test the chat and maybe just let us know what you're snacking on. <laughs> um, and if you have questions, of course, feel free to put them in there or we'll um, save a few minutes at the end as well that you can ask questions also. Let's see, make sure everybody, somebody put something in chat just so I know that you can hear me. How's that? <laughs> Okay, thank you, Heather. Hi. <laughs> Just making sure. Yay. Thank you, Israel. Ooh, m and I wish I had some of those. <laughs> I haven't even eaten yet today. It's crazy, but oh gosh. this morning and I'm having water now. I was like, I'll eat after this thing because oh. I have a break. So. <laughs> I'll, try to, I'll try to go quickly so you don't pass out. Oh, yeah, not at all. No, I'm totally fine. Don't worry. It's just one of those things where today's been a little back to back. So, mm -hmm. um, all right. Well, we're a minute in, so I don't want to um, take up too much of the valuable time for you. So I'll turn it over to you, Jessica, so you can go ahead and um, give us a little intro on, you know, who you are and kind of your background and what brought you into the Carrie Green um, group. And yeah, go right ahead. Oh. Stage is yours. So I'm Jessica McNaughton, president of Carrie Green, and we are a curator of sustainable brands. So um, a lot of, you know, we kind of started out as a distributor and we've sort of turned into a sales and marketing and distribution arm for a lot of uh, sustainable brands. You know, the, the small to mid-sized guy who has a great story and just needs kind of more of an amplified voice to tell it. And that's really what we um, was, that's really what we're able to do is to help them kind of you know, get their story out, amplify their voice, get them in more places um, and tell their sustainability stories. So we have some brands you may be familiar with like Paperstone, uh, Durat, Solid Surface, which is a high recycled content solid surface. Some of the recycled glass products like Geos and Gelasi, Ice Stone, you know, in uh, some new emerging products like uh, Lapitex, Sintered Stone, Cure Acoustics um, and other brands. So well, that's what we do is we kind of bring those brands together and then we educate. So a big pillar of the company is not just getting materials out there, but also educating on different topics that apply to architects and designers. And one of the more popular topics is biophilic design. And that is what we will be talking about today, specifically the um, organoid wall coverings and how they bring biophilic design into a space in a unique way. So I will go quickly. I know this is just a break, not a, um, uh, diatribe, so I will get started. So here's a little bit more background on what we do. Um, we try to help you create healthier spaces, healthier for people, healthier for the planet. So let's talk about biophilic design and organoid. So let's start with what is biophilic design. So you guys have been hearing about this for several years, so I won't go too far into a deep dive, but there's a, um, a really good, um, uh, publication by Terrapin, which is about the um, 14 pillars of, uh, or the 14 um, uh, types of biophilic design. And we'll briefly touch on some of the overarching concepts, but basically biophilic design is the, our need to associate with nature, whether we're indoors or out. Um, so it, the hypothesis is a scientific hypothesis, but at the end of the day, it just means that when we're around nature, we feel better. And I think we all kind of inherently know that, but there's a lot of studies and that's what that Terrapin study really talks about, or that paper really talks about is the documented studies that show your hospital stay is shorter. Your absenteeism is lower. Your employee productivity is higher if you incorporate nature into a space. And that can be views of the outside, that can be natural elements. Um, and we'll talk about some of those as we go along here. So what are the benefits? If you look at all these different places where we're, we all spend some of our time, schools, offices, healthcare, retail, and community, um, you can see that biophilic design has these benefits. And I, I could read them to you, but you guys can see them there. What are the most important things in, say, an office environment? More productive employees that are there more often, that have more concentration, 
um, that's going to save the owner's money. So the problem with lead when it first came out was that it was a concept and it was expensive from the outset. Biophilic design is very different. It's not a certification. It's just a way to introduce these bottom line benefits with documented case studies that show that they're real and that it is going to positively impact your bottom line. And it's going to be a more pleasant experience for the people within the space. That's your kids. That's the people at the hospital taking care of you. That's the lady at the cash register. And that's you in your office. And the actual chemical reaction in, within your body behind it is related to the sympathetic and parasympathetic system where it stimulates that parasympathetic system. Nature stimulates that system. And it's um, been documented in multiple studies, but a walk in nature, it, 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 you can measure the amount that it stimulates your parasympathetic system, which reduces stress. And we all know how much stress there is in the world today and how important that stress reduction is. So let's talk about the 14 principles I mentioned earlier. So there's three major pillars. The first one is nature in the space. This is a very direct implementation about bio, of biophilic design visual connection with nature. I am looking into this space. I see grass, visual connection with nature, non-visual connection with nature. There's a rosemary herb garden in the kitchen. You know, I can smell the rosemary, um, non-rhythmic sensory stimuli, thermal and airflow variability, presence of water, dynamic and diffuse light connection with natural systems. So these seven implementations of nature in the space are very much kind of recreating what happens out in nature, wind, the sound of water falling within the space itself. Nature of the space is the orientation, right? So it's kind of almost like a little feng shui, but the idea of prospect. Prospect is when I walk into a restaurant and this is me because I'm a control freak, I walk and I sit with my back to the wall so I can see what's happening in front of me. That's prospect. It's a natural need to know, see what's going on. And refuge is the this idea of kind of being protected, almost like um, th those egg chairs. They actually recommend those egg chairs for, um, like my son is a little bit ADHD, and he needs that kind of huggingness. So that idea of refuge is very calming to him. So prospect and refuge. So you'll see a lot of places will build these little corners where it's a, like a cozy corner, but you can see everything. Um, and it's they actually say one of the most comfortable places for people is a savanna environment. And that is like wild animals will hide behind something where they're protected, but they can see everything. And that is nature of the space. And creating that kind of um, perspective within a building is, is something a lot of designers are doing these days. Um, mystery, this is the idea. See this uh, acoustic panel hanging? You can kind of see what's behind it, but not really. It's kind of like frosted glass things like that, it kind of creates this idea of mystery and you're curious. And when you're curious, you're alert. Um, and then risk and peril is another one, glass staircases or staircases that, you know, have like a, a you know, glass on the side or a, a glass bottom floor or a cantilevered um, walkway. All of those things create this idea of risk and peril. You know you're safe, but it still stimulates you and keeps you alert and it keeps you productive. So um, those are nature of the space and natural analogs. So this is something in nature that we're recreating within a building. So you see this like um, these almost like natural, like a snail shell, right? That um, Fibonacci series is used a lot in design. And that's a very natural uh, phenomenon that's recreated in a lot of architecture. Um, and then complexity and order is another one where something is it's organized, but it looks, you know, complex. So it's kind of disorienting because it is both at the same time, which nature is too. Um, so these are the last three pillars. And these are basically, you know, kind of mirroring nature, but not being so direct. So you've got nature in the space, bringing nature in the space, nature of the space, which is kind of the layout, and then natural analogs, which are things that evoke something natural in your mind, but they're not you know, a plant in that direct. So some examples of biophilic design. This is a hospital actually that was designed using the direct product I was talking about earlier. It's these bright green uh, colors and they created trees. So they couldn't have 
trees in this children's hospital, but they used color for wayfinding. And then they recreated these trees using the, sol the recycled solid surface on the walls. Um, here's another place where you see, you know, the actual, you know, trees are physically in the building. Um, this is actually our office in Raleigh. And so what we've done here is we used acoustic uh, panels to create clouds above, and there's several other more you can't see in the photo. Um, and then we have on the back wall kind of a bark cabinet. We have a moss uh, a carpet that's a moss carpet. And then we have a panel of sunflower petal wallpaper, actual sunflower petals that kind of emulates um, the, the sun in the background. So we tried to create kind of that, that um, biophilic design in, in our own workspace. Here's a, uh, another one where there's moss on that back wall. Uh, so bringing nature into a space. And then let's get to organoids. So that was kind of the setup for biophilic design is just kind of bringing nature into a space so that people are calmer, more productive, healthier, more successful, more present. An organoid is biophilic design. So this is one of the lines that we carry. And this is, organoid is bio-based surfaces that are just a really great way to bring nature into a space. And it doesn't, it's not an all or nothing thing. It's not, you know, wallpapering your whole place in, you know, um, some of these materials, but I'll show you some of the materials and you can think about some of the applications. So if you look here, these are, this is samples of the materials. So you can see there's, um, there's flower petals, there's hay, there's moss. Um, and Organoid is a company based in Austria and it's in the, the Alps in Tyrol and, and the Tyrolean fields are known for, you know, just, they're just hay fields and the factories planted right in the middle of the hay fields and they harvest that hay and they use it in some of these panels. So the panels where you can kind of see that hay, that is um, the fields outside of the factory. So they take basically any natural raw material and they lay it up on these, in these giant rolls of basically, it's kind of like a wallpaper. It can be used for, for furniture, for, for wall cladding, um, for, uh, you know, paneling doors, but they, um, they, the whole company is climate neutral. They bind more carbon than they emit through all these natural products. The materials that they source are all post-industrial products. So obviously the hay is not post-industrial, but it's obviously has to be harvested. Um, but the, some, some of the lavender product is post-production from tea manufacturing or the coffee grounds are post-production from um, coffee manufacturing. And then everything is bound together with a very, very natural, non-toxic resin. And the materials hold up really well. They're very durable. You would think, oh my gosh, I'm going to rub that flower and it's going to come right off, but it won't. This is the corn flower and I can rub it and scratch it. And it's very hard to get any of the material to come off. So um, it's been used in shoes. It's been used in retail fixtures, lampshades, phone cases, um, lots of different applications for, for the organoid. So the obviously the raw material comes from nature, but the biophilic element is some of those things we talked about, about nature in the space and having, you can actually smell it. So I have the um, coffee in my office, you know, all the time. And I always use it as an example because it smells like coffee. Um, the alpine hay smells like alpine hay. Some of them have no scent, but but most of them incorporate that, that scent of nature. So it's not just the vis visual piece where you can see actual natural elements, but you get that actual, the tactile, you can touch it and, and smell it as well. So there's very few building material products that I've come across that incorporate all the senses like that. Um, they also can be used for, for light control and they can use, um, they're also used in acoustic products. So a lot of these can be mounted on acoustic panels um, and used for acoustics as well. So there's a stock collection um, and you can see here, there's some very dense colors like the moss on the left and the cornflower on the right. Then you've got the alpine hay. And then on the bottom right, you can see it's, there's a medium. So there's a very dense, a medium and a light and the light collections are the ones on the top. So you can specify how much of this organic material you want on there as well. And if you guys want a copy of that PDF, we're happy to send that to you. Um, and then there's custom things that, that people have requested and, and asked for. So 
you can see hop tendrils on spelt. So we've had breweries say, here's my hops. I want these laid up on panels or put on rolls for wall coverings, or I want a sheet, you know, a four by, you know, 20 foot sheet with hops from my brewery on it for, you know, my reception um, wall. And that's absolutely something um, that they'll do at the factory in Austria. So there's also this orange and dill, safflower, denim. Um, there was the sunflower petals. That's the one I have in my office. It's very, very bright. It's very pretty. They also do sunflower seeds. Um, but really any organic material can be put on these um, products. And they do stock, you know, several of the SKUs um, that are just, you know, at the factory ready to ship. And they kind of ship almost like architect plans used to be, you know, rolled up in two. Um, here's that, that kind of sun, that, that sunflower, uh, panel. And again, you could get, you could do the whole wall. This was just, an, we wanted something that was, that we could dismount if we moved office, for example. And then on the left, you can see that, um, that dill and, and orange. And this is all on their website and it's organoids.com slash references. If you want to flip through some of the installation photos, they're very, very inspiring. If you're looking for, you know, some kind of creative ideas to bring nature into a space. And like I said, it doesn't have to be all or nothing, but a little bit of this material goes a really long way. And you can see um, on the left-hand side here, they have a self-adhesive. So you can just like peel it off and put it on yourself depending on the application. And then there's a translucent self-adhesive as well, because a lot of people use it for partition walls to create that sense of mystery I was talking about before where you can kind of see through, but not completely. And then again, it comes in these rolls. They're 1.36 meters or four feet wide. Um, and you can get them on this natural flax backer, or you can get them on this eco fleece white backer, depending on kind of if you want that natural organic tan look, or if you want a pure white. And again, these are the, the other options are um, this, this fleece backer, there's a flooring option. So you can get this as flooring. So that, that's pretty neat. There's certain SKUs, not all of them, but most of the hay options. Um, and what they do is they use more binder to get you know to keep the material more durable and then they'll put like a, a like a hot melt top coat or polyurethane depending on the application but really need to be kind of walking on a hay field um there's a burger chain that uses only organoid flooring and it's really really attractive um look and then you can also get it on hpl if you have a millwork application where you're looking to um you know laminate it onto a substrate the acoustic products, again, we've had a lot of people that want to make baffles out of it, or they just want like a really cool conference room wall, but they want it to have some acoustic characteristics. So we have slot um, and um, these absorber panels where you can, where they are actually, you know, pre-made with the organoid material on the face of it. And then on the far right here, you have a picture of the absorber, which is a full panel and it's got um, actual wool insulation um, behind it for, for more acoustics. And, you know, you can use pretty much any um, uh, one of the finishes as the, as the you know, um, the colorway, whether you want the rose petals, sunflower, cornflower, the daisies or, or um, coffee, whatever. So, so I'm going to quickly flip through some applications here. Um, here's uh, one of the applications that this one's in Germany, I believe. Uh, this is the, one of the flooring ones I mentioned, and you can see that click lock flooring there at the top. Um, in an office environment, these are, this one has it on the walls, um, as acoustic panels. And then here, this is leaf skeletons. So this is another one that's a stock item that is literally leaf skeletons on the, um, translucent, um, self-adhesive. So it creates again, that sense of mystery, um, but brings that natural element into the space. This one was a neat one. This was a hotel that wanted the, the natural uh, grasses from the site where they uh, built the hotel as the front reception desk on that translucent self-adhesive and then backlit. So these grasses are actually from the job site where this hotel was built. The ones on the front of the facade here. Here's another one, high traffic environment. Um, they used it, you know, on the, on the front of that uh, transaction area in a restaurant. Retail fixtures, very popular. A lot of you know, as people are, you know, going back to work, we're trying to lure them back, you know, with an experience in these stores and a lot of places are struggling. And you can see here that they've used the rose petals 
Um, they've used the alpine hay, and they've really just tried to use kind of nature to, to bring the space to life. Light fixtures is another one, so you can kind of see you've almost got this like grass almost hanging from the ceiling. Um, moss is an interesting one because to have an actual moss wall is a lot of maintenance and it introduces a lot of moisture um, and it's very, very high wear. Um, it doesn't do well without a lot of maintenance. And organoids moss is bright, that bright, bright green, but without all that maintenance. Um, and it is moss as well. So it's a really nice solution for when you're trying to, you want to use a moss wall like that, but you just don't have the upkeep. Here's the rose petals. This was used at a fragrance display. Eyeglass store um, on the left-hand side, you can see they use that as their um, backdrop for the eyeglasses. And then here are just some other kind of more small scale retail applications where um, they've used it for these little wallets. You can see um, cell phone cases. This chair was actually thermoformed. So um, that is done kind of with a, with, um, a mold. And I know that went quickly, um, but that was my time. So um, if you want to learn about organoids, you can go to our website, caragreen.com and look at organoids. Um, or you can go to organoids.com and look at some of their references. Uh, if you want us to do the full biophilic design CEU, we do that as well as one on biomimicry. Um, there's a link there. And then um, my email is jessica And you, we have a podcast, we have a blog, we try to cover all industry topics and, you know, keep you guys posted on what's what's going on in the building materials industry, the stuff that no one else wants to talk about, like silicosis and all that. So um, if you want to follow us, we will keep you informed um, in a edgy manner, as edgy as we can get. So uh, thank you. And thank you for um, having us today, Source. Thank you, Jessica. That was great. That was super inspiring. I'd never heard of organoid and I'm super excited about it. I love the idea that you could smell it and have more sensory interaction too. That is very cool. Um, did anybody have any questions they wanted to, to jump into the, um, oh, here's one. What was the name of the author of the paper on biophilia? Terrapin. Um, and if you want to drop me a quick email, we can send it to you. Um, but if you look up Terrapin, like, like um, you know, like what Maryland mascot is, T-E-R-R-A-P-I-N. Um, someone else asked a product. Green. Maddie, do you want to jump in? It's Terrapin Green. And Maddie, if you have that that link to Terrapin Green, the 14 principles, do you want to throw that in the chat? Are, the ta are they tackable? I mean, yeah, yeah. You, you can. They're not like, I wouldn't say they're infinitely self-healing, but they're, um, I mean, yeah, they're, okay. I've got them all. Else yeah. also asked um, on the acoustic panel, do they micro perforate the front panel as well, or is it just the? No, because that eco fleece is really um, uh, per like permeable. It's almost like a fabric. So it'll go right through the, the organic material th through the eco fleece. And so the, the holes are not visible, which is one of the nice things about it. Nice. Very cool. Uh, someone else is asking Tahara. Uh, is, I don't know if that's how she yes, right. yeah. What is the price point for the standard sheet size? Um, so the prices will vary on what the um, material is, but I say generally it runs like 12 to 25 a square foot. Some of the really custom stuff like the saffron, <laughs> as you can imagine, is very expensive. But, but the nice thing is you can get that 1.36 meter by anything. You can get it by one meter. You can get it by 10 meters, um, you know, so you can get small amounts of it. And we'll, you know, we send people samples all the time so they can mock something up. We have some very big brands that are making shoes out of it um, and, and other types of, you know, retail items, which are, are really exciting. Oh, and Elizabeth's asking, which is kind of what you just answered, but if you can get custom shapes cut up, like for instance, for a logo or something. So it sounds like you um, could. You, I think you could. I don't think they would do that at the factory, but anyone with a CNC that's laying up the panel. So I always recommend people get the, get the eco fleece or flax backer rolled up and sent to them. And then if you want to mount it on something, do it over here because shipping a full panel of something makes no sense to send that you know, something that has to go on a pallet from Austria when you could send something that can go, you know, in a, in a box. So I would just, like we sell wheat board, I would just mount it on wheat board. I mean, that's super, super natural. Um, and then you can see and see it from there, but you would just see and see right into it. 
Nice. Very cool. And Maddie, Maddie just posted the links. Um, do they stock anything in the U S so we're the stocking, um, partner in the U S everything comes really quickly from there. So you can get everything from them in a couple of weeks. And like I said, because it's in rolls, it's not, not, um, that difficult to get it from Austria. So we haven't stocked everything. We're bringing in six SKUs to start the most popular ones, like the Alpine hay, um, and the skeleton leaves, you know, some of the more, more popular ones, the blue cornflower is so pretty. I can't even describe enough, but this, it's just so beautiful. Uh, we have a cabinet out of it in our, in our office and they have everything from spelt husks. These are sunflower seeds. Um, so one of the things we've noticed is Torzo, which is in, was in Oregon as well. Um, is it was a great product. They were these infused panels and they recently went out of business. They got bought by Sherwin Williams. So organoid has been, has a lot of colorways that match really closely with Torzo. So we've been able to use it a lot for that too, just because it's, you know, people can't get stuff right now. And this is kind of a nice fit for some of those um, options because the colors are so diverse. Nice. Very cool. Well, great. Thank you so much, everybody, yeah. for joining and Jessica for the awesome presentation. Very inspiring. And um, hopefully you guys will all come back next week for another great snack break. So thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>